Next one, Chris Gonzalez. This is an, an interesting one. Uh, Dutch, what wrestler in the territories uh, you felt should have been a top guy but wasn't because of tragedy or politics in the locker room that ruined him? Thank you for your great podcast, sir. Well, I just saw one. Uh, Marty Jannetty. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. The Dark Side of the Ring. I've not seen it. Should have been a bigger star. But, and I'm going to tell a story about these guys here in one second, which you like this. Mm -hmm. But they had a habit of, Marty had a habit of just screwing up everything, really. I'm on a plane. We're going somewhere from somewhere. I think I get on the plane in Atlanta, maybe. And we're going to Dallas or wherever. And I'm like in the middle of the plane and it wasn't crowded. There's a lot of seats behind me, but like in the very back, I think Sean Michael sat on the back row and they had two girls sitting in front of him. And then, and Marty Janetti, I think. And then I could hear the girls laughing in the back and they started drinking and all kind of, I didn't know what was going on, but I would look back because he was getting a little bit tipsy. And I remember Marty walked up beside my seat and I said, who are your friends back there? He said, I don't know. We're going to find out. So when we landed in Dallas, everybody got up to leave the plane, except who you think mm -hmm. the girls and their friend their guy friend. And they were like this. They were completely knocked out in the back. And Marty thought that was the funniest thing because now they're going to miss their next flight. They got to be helped off the plane. So what he did, he dropped him a couple of somas or roofies or whatever in their drinks. And they just passed out. And he thought it was, now, I don't think uh, Shawn Michaels had anything to do with it, but I think it was just Marty being Marty and nothing happened to the girls except he just kind of drugged them up. So they had to be helped off the plane. I mean, they couldn't even talk. They woke them up before we finally got it. And they were like this, they were as in no condition to go anywhere. So guess what I did. I got off the plane. I didn't know Marty Giannetti. I didn't know Shawn Michaels. I didn't know any of them. I, mm -hmm. I went my way and I said, I'll see you later. Put the hat down. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened to those girls, but I guess they made it. So whatever. Uh, so you watched the dark side of the ring then. So what was surprising about it? Give us a little review of the show. Uh, well, it just basically uh, said how they got together. And he, he being Martin Sean, I presume. Martin and Sean putting Martin and Sean together. And I think he said that he was kind of, they kind of steered him Sean's way because they, they could see a little money in him and just being green. <clears throat> so they finally put them together and they put them together with that gimmick and it got over big time. Uh, I think they called them a different name. Uh, yeah, they were the Midnight Rockers at one point. Did you see them? Did you see them in Memphis? Because they were there briefly. No, I didn't see them in Memphis. But th they made the rounds. I think they went to Memphis. They went to Continental. Then I think they went there. Yeah, uh, this was AWA this was as well. I think they they went. To, okay, yeah. yeah, they, they went yeah. there. And this was was before the uh, developmental thing in Atlanta that they have now. I mean, in Orlando, a WWE. So they made it and they, they did well. And I forgot what happened. They got into a fight and Vince was looking to split them up anyway. And Vince has an innate ability. He's not always right, but he has an innate ab ability to tell when the shelf life is over or expiring. 
So he was just looking for a reason to split them. And since I think they'd had a little bit of trouble or Marty had, and that's when they come up with the barbershop uh, segment. And that segment, if you watch it back, it's well done. It's really well done. And when he went through, <coughs> when he went through that glass, you know, it was over then. And people, kids, they actually cried. And I think that's when Al Snow got with Marty and did the new rockers. But that didn't meet with that didn't meet with much success. But no, there excuse a, me, guys. Well, while you cough <coughs> out, I know I sort of know the Marty story. There was a few years gap. Marty would be fired, hired, fired, hired, fired, hired, fired uh, eight or nine times, I think, throughout his career. I think the Al Snow tag team came a few years later. I spoke with Al quite recently as well, and um, <clears throat> he said that. Uh, he said a couple of things about Marty, and one of them was, I've never seen someone pull as many girls as Marty did. He just said he was just he was just a magnet. He was just he was just that was his true talent. But the other thing is, is actually how talented a wrestler Marty was, and that gets overshadowed by his personal uh actions and um penchant for partying a bit too much. Okay, he could pull a lot of girls, that's that's true, because he just he was just that guy. <clears throat> what got me later on, I think it was last year or not too long ago. He was talking about his incident in Columbus, Georgia, talking about making a guy disappear. Yeah. It wasn't his first time in making a guy disappear, which sounds like he killed a guy. And it was taken with such a belief that the Columbus, Georgia Police Department actually launched an investigation into it to see if they could match up any names or anybody who went missing about that time. And and he's very he was telling a like a, a wrestling angle line that he was and but he was given the rest of it so you, you got to hear it mm. i mean i bet the police were looking at him like what the hell are you saying but it made a it made some national news i think it was funny you can go out and say something and people have enough they know enough about you to say well that could be true but they never could find anything. I don't think Marty killed anybody. I, I just don't. I don't think he's that way. But by him saying that, admitting it to the world that he had done that, well, they were like, uh, they had to investigate somewhat, but they found nothing. 